Ha ha ha. It's Chima again. Thank you guys for tuning in. This time, you know, we're going to be starting a personal series for me, reflecting on and recapping my professional career year by year up until this point. We're going to start with year one. It was a crazy year, blah, blah, blah. We're going to get into all that. Thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, follow me on my platforms here. That was good, huh? Appreciate it. Um, but let's get into it. Mr. Aha ha. Hey. Calling to our vehicles like a beast. So year one, you know what, well, before heading into year one, I finished my senior career at UC Davis. I was the man, I was averaging like 20 and 10. And, you know, I thought I'd be second round. I thought I'd go to the combine. But then, you know, I signed with an agent that didn't really have too many connections. And I learned that it was gonna be harder to make it to the NBA than I thought I would. So I needed to go overseas. And I was open to it. You know, I grew up traveling. Going overseas wasn't scary to me like it is to, you know, some other players. But because I'm not American and I grew up traveling, like for me, it was fine. The agent that I was with at the time, she couldn't get me any deals. Fortunately, unfortunately, I had to let her go. After three months, crazy, right? Off to a great start. And then I signed with a different agency based in Australia, and they get me a deal to go to second division France, not first division. And for me, I was a little bit sad, but then when I saw how much I was getting for someone that was broke, you know, my first 22 years of life, 3,500 US dollars a month was a big deal for me. That's with the car included and with the apartment to myself. So, you know, my mindset kind of changed, and I was like, okay. I'm gonna go into this very, very excited. I'm, I'm getting paid to play basketball. How could I be complaining? You know, this is my first year. I got plenty of years to go before I get to where I need to go. So my mindset changed and then we're off to Rouen Metropole Basket in Rouen, France, R-O-U-E-N. For those that can't spell, <laughs> Mr. Ahaha is here to teach you again. Um, thank me later. <laughs> So, and that starts my journey to Rouen Metropole Basket in Rouen, France, close to Paris. And we head there. <sighs> Preseason was actually really good. I was killing, I was hooping. You know, we had six imports. Two of them were at my position. I was the second one at my position. So part of me should have maybe thought that, hmm, how's this gonna work in terms of playing time? But, you know, I didn't really think too much of it. You know, the person that was at my position, shout out to Zimmy, love you, bro. Um, he was hurt dealing with injuries in preseason, so he wasn't playing as much. And I was cooking, you know, I remember my very first game on European soil preseason or whatever it was against Le Mans. And they were the French champions the season before. And I just got off the plane two days ago and I gave them like 18 and 12, like easy. Dunking on him, ah! Flexing, ah! And like, who is this guy with the goggles running all over the place? Like, who is this kid? Oh, man. They didn't know who Mr. Ahaha was at the time, and I don't blame him. But the point is, I was cooking in preseason. Leaders Cup, for those that know what it is, it's like the preseason cup in France where you play for qualifications throughout the season. Two games at home, two games on the road. I was playing well, still. I wasn't playing as much, but I was playing enough for me to know that I, I'm gonna make an impact on this team. Three days later, my coach, Alec, cuts me and he says, you know what, actually he didn't even speak to me. We played a French cup game and he didn't look me in the face before the game and without no warning, no conversation, I didn't play the entire game. And then they won the game, I felt useless. I was like, damn, this is not how my career was supposed to start. And then the next practice on Monday, he told me, We will not be needing your services anymore. And that was a shock. I felt like I let everyone down. I'm thinking to myself, how the hell am I going to play in the NBA if I'm getting cut from a second division team in France? <sighs> Depression kicks in. And I don't use that word lightly. I didn't genuinely mean it when I say that. Like, And what made it worse was I had to practice with them for six weeks. Imagine practicing or working a job for someone that doesn't want you there and you just feel out of place. And I was going there and I was sad. And anyone that knows me knows I like to be happy. I like to smile. And I couldn't even fake being happy over there just because I was miserable. You know, I stopped posting about basketball on my Instagram and people aren't commenting as much. And they're like, people are, I'm sure people are wondering what's going on. And yeah, six weeks of me forgetting who I was as a player. I had to watch so many clips of my highlights in Davis, which you'll see right here. I was 
decent. I appreciate it. But yeah, I, I, I did a lot of that. And actually, you know what kept me alive then? Game of Thrones. That's when I started watching Game of Thrones. Shout out to Zimmy, to Jamar, to Alonzo. They all told me, yo, you got to give Game of Thrones a chance. And Game of Thrones kept me relatively sane. I think it's the greatest show ever, but my favorite show is Entourage. That's a different discussion for a different day. Regardless of season eight, however you feel about it, Game of Thrones is the greatest. Anyway, six weeks later, we finally get a job opportunity. And keep in mind, I was making 3,500 US dollars at my first team. And my agent at the time calls me and he says, we found your next team. It's in second division as well, but you will be getting a pay decrease and you're gonna go from 3,500 to 2,200. A month. That's when it started to hurt a little bit because people at McDonald's probably making more than me working full time. And I was, shout out to McDonald's though. Um, the mango pineapple smoothie goes crazy. Oh my goodness. And what, the sausage, egg and McMuffin? <laughs> All right, focus, Gene. God ah, damn. Anyway, um, so I get to Dana, I got to Dana, you guys treated me well. You know, I got there and I was trying not to make mistakes. I was trying to, you know, just be solid, not step on anyone's toes, just find my confidence again, find my love again. You know, shout out to the coach at the time, Remy, really good person, you know, great guy. Um, you know, he believed in me. He told me to express myself and play the way I, I needed to play to help the team. And I would say it took me until like, I got there in December, it took me until like February to like truly be myself. Myself. And when I started being myself, whew, I was going crazy. And you're gonna see some of the dunks right here. Ah, ooh, ah, 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 ah. I was dunking everything that season. Like honestly, like I look back at my tapes then, and I was like, why was I so angry? But I know why I was angry. Obviously, you. We just talked about it. I got cut three games into the season. Like, what is going on? But I remember dunking everything that year and, you know, monkey dunking, ripping the rim off. You know, that's my signature dunk. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll see it right here. I know, I know. I try to break the rims off, never could. But, you know, I get to February and March and I'm, I'm feeling myself, I'm back, I'm showing off. And I'm thinking like, okay, yeah, this is easy. This is easy again. I'm putting up numbers. I think I'm averaging like 15 and eight or 15 and seven, whatever it was. I'm shooting well from three. I'm shooting well from the free throw line. And I'm like, all right, yeah, NBA time. <laughs> Stupid. What you thought this was? One, we're not a good team yet. Like, I think we were 14th or 15th place. So I was thinking, and my agent at the time was telling me that I would go to first division France because my numbers and the way I was playing had a lot of questions for me. And I was gonna answer them by showing them I could prove myself in first division France. And I thought that was gonna happen, but wrong. <sighs> I had to go back to second division. But before that, actually, before we get to that, I was getting trials. I couldn't even get contracts, like teams in, I remember a team in first division, Germany, I'm not gonna say their name, there's no point, but they didn't, they just didn't know me. They didn't see enough of me and they offered me like a, a week tryout to come. I had to pay for my flight and then try out for a week. And it was like, all right, come on. You guys don't really want me. Like, what's the point of doing that? But, you know, my agent at the time, he was promising me I would go first division. I will be getting 8000 a month. So think about it from 2200 a month after taxes to making 8000 a month. To me, that's really good money. So I'm expecting to go up and next season I'm going 8000 a month and life is great. I can buy a Lamborghini. <sighs> I'm getting 3700 a month next season. And we'll talk more about that in the next episode. But again... 2200 a month and then only go up to 3700 a month. I was making progress. Yes, I'll, I'm grateful. But then I, I felt like, you know, I started off the season making 3500 a month. So I really only got $200 more. So I was even more motivated. I was very determined and I, but I knew I had to make a change and I ultimately ended up letting that agency go. And I ended up signing with the agents that I'm with now. Shout out to Buna, shout out to Andrew, Calm Sport. You know, they've taken care of me. And that's when the journey truly begins of elevating. But to wrap this up, I'll say that, you know, that season was arguably the toughest season. And there's another season that comes to mind when I talk about that, but we'll get to that in a few more episodes. But that season taught me a lot just because I understood how good basketball was at all levels. You know, it was second division France, but there were a lot of guys that could easily be playing at a high level team. 
making 200, 300, 400K. And yeah, and I was proven right when I saw guys at other levels, they just had the right opportunity that, you know, they just got taken care of and they took advantage of it. You know, it doesn't mean that they're better players than these other guys, they're just in the right situation and good for them. So I, I never knock people playing second division or people grinding in lower leagues and lower countries to get where they need to be. Just because there's, there's hoopers everywhere, man. Respect the game and the game will respect you and reward you back. So that was the first year of my career. Um, it was a tough start, but I found myself. I got my swag back. Actually, I forgot to mention, the last game of the season, I went up and I blocked a shot off the backboard, boom! And then I'm gonna show you the clip right here. And then I cut my head open and I broke my wrist again for the third time. Thankfully, that was the last time I did it, but I broke my wrist and then I didn't play the rest of the game. Remember last game of the season, I'm about to fly back to LA and the team told me, oh, we'll send you to the doctors, but nobody went with me <laughs> to the doctors. I didn't speak French and I'm at the doctors after the game. They didn't speak English. The communication was bad. I'm waiting for like an hour before someone saw me. And then when they finally saw me, uh, they didn't even do an x-ray. They did some tests and then they said, oh, your wrist not even broken. Really? It was broken. And I found that out when I got to LA four days later. So I had a broken wrist for the third time and for four days I was just hanging out with it like this, knowing something was wrong. Um, and that's how my rookie year ended. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. It's Mr. Ha Ha Ha. Like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok, follow me on Twitter, and stay tuned for the next video. We'll be recapping year two in Kemper, second division France as well. See you there.